Hi there, my name is Tamara Bartmas, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through what you can expect during this Libra new moon. Now, there's a lot of energy happening, and what can you expect with a lot of water energy and a lot of air energy? Unfortunately, we've seen this recently with a bunch of hurricanes happening and the impact of the wind and the water. Um, you can see impact of air and water and other things like bubbles or spritzing of of water off of you know the water being spritzed by the air moving across it there's a lot of correlation between how air and water can work together in natural world but we're going to be talking a lot about that on the emotional intellectual level so i want to share with you this this breakdown because we have a lot of intense energy it's not just a libra new moon but it is a solar eclipse which brings a lot of its own unique energy and remember eclipses happen when the moon is close to the nodes during a full moon or during a new moon and as we look at this chart here we can see that the node the south node is at six degrees and we have the new moon at 10 degrees three minutes okay and this conjunction opens up again the karmic energy or the, because it's next to the south node more of that karmic old energy around how we feel about our relationships, how we co cope in relationships, how we really lean into our people-pleasing tendencies, our codependence relationships, any wounds as a child where we felt like our identity was tied into the relationship um, more than for us as an individual to be a part of the relationship. So a lot of relationship issues might be coming to the surface, a lot of um, business partner issues or anything that involves a close one-on-one -on -one with somebody else, marriage issues um, that are going to be presented to be reviewed and to sort of feel through them because the moon, again, is the indicator of this event of the of the solar eclipse as well as for the new moon as well as um just that conjunction there is is really playing a big part we also have a grand water trine going on between the planet venus in scorpio planet mars in cancer and the planet saturn retrograde in pisces and of course each of those brings its own flavor to the expression of our emotions, but we come again to this reminder. I, I feel like when a planet goes retrograde, it's really important to remember that that intensifies the planet and its expression. And um, because this is a grand water, trying to pay attention to your spiritual habits, um, your spiritual patterns, your spiritual discipline, um, and working through that to guide you through this. The other reason I point that out is because we have a grand or a minor, um, grand, minor trine, minor grand trine, um, with Neptune retrograde being the apex of this, um, impacting, um, the Uranus retrograde and Pluto retrograde and the Neptune retrograde. So we have a lot of Neptune, a lot of retrograde energy that again is saying the work to do is not outside of you. It's inside of you. It's, it's looking within and examining that and getting in tune with spiritual messages to help you navigate how you move forward. Because once those planets go direct, the energy will shift and this reflection or this opportunity to be deeper in reflection will have shifted. Um, and this, this minor grand trine here with the apex of Neptune really is only here for a little bit longer before it shifts out of this opportunity for that kind of insight and reflection. So pay attention to your dreams, um, pay attention to your spiritual practice and utilize that to support you during this season. Um, the, the ruler of Libra is the planet Venus. And so we do want to pay attention to Venus's placement here in Scorpio, because again, there might be, there might be some deep wounds around our feminine nature, um, deep wounds around our values, the things that we, um, desire to create, um, even wounds around our sexuality and, uh, our ability to trust others and especially ourselves. And all of that is getting its own uh, sort of reemergence and being brought into this energy to be sort of 
to to help be integrated into our whole experience. The other thing that's important about this new moon is that we have Mercury here in Libra. And with Mercury in Libra, again, the theme that will continue through into the end of the, through the next six months until we have the next eclipse in March after the spring equinox, we will see again this theme around how are we show how are we communicating? How are we learning and talking and sharing our ideas, put uh, practicing using our voice in our relationships and bringing our words to the table for negotiation, for discussion, for uh, f- for an equal, uh, an equal conversation and has our voice ever been injured in relationships? And is it now the time to sort of explore and heal that because your voice is a big part of how you show up as a person and how you show up in relationships. And so re- sort of reclaiming your voice and um, becoming more integrated in, as a, as a person now with this this opposition to the North Node in Aries, the lesson for the last year or so has been, let's lean into understanding who we are as an individual so that we can show up healthier in a relationship. So this this dynamic continues to play out and is accentuated through this solar eclipse and will, will be helpful in knowing how to work through and integrate the lessons of the past so that you can move forward. Now, part of the solar eclipse energy is really, again, the moon is obscuring the earth's view of the sun. So the moon and our emotions become almost as big as from our perception as our identity. And and so if you're caught up in the stories of the past and they become super emotional for you, it's going to be really hard for you to necessarily navigate moving forward. So we want to learn how to not be a victim to our past. The moon um, can indicate where we are holding ourselves victim to old stories and past experiences and past energy that really is not uh, allowing us to feel safe to integrate and move forward as a, as a whole with the, the sun and moon together. But the opportunity is saying, hey, if you want to hold on to the past, that's going to make it painful. But if you want to integrate, this is the time to integrate. We can we can do that right now. Um, and the the opportunity is to do that right now and to not not necessarily wait. And really being able to integrate the conscious and the subconscious into uh, how we approach relationships, how we view relationships and partnerships, and how we are able to move forward with healthier dynamics as um, that individual in a relationship. It's not necessarily about it's it's about learning how to work in the relationship, not always just leaving or abandoning the relationships. Um, again, relationships are two way street, and so you need equal parties want both parties are needing to want to engage in that development and growth together. And that's important to recognize. You can't force another person to change. Um, You have to acknowledge that they are an individual and respect their individuality, just as you are an individual and you can respect yours. And that's when it's so wonderful is when partnerships can come together with equal um, differences that are get get to have equal airtime and conversation time and really be discussed together. So this is a great potential for healing old relationship wounds and talking about it, communicating about it and not taking offense to it, but recognizing it might be very emotionally charged because of the emotions of the past. And that's what um, the moon is reminding us of. That's what the grand water trine is, as well as these planetary energy and points in Pisces. So a lot of compassion, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of um, gentleness to oneself and to others. Um, and really, again, you know, Mars is the ruler of Aries. And as we learn to sort of reparent ourselves and re-nurture our child, that is going to help us also step into a greater sense of self. Self. Sometimes we just run off of old patterns of how we were raised and how we reacted to our mother figure or our nurturing figure. And that can sometimes out, we can outgrow that and we need to change that. And so it's an opportunity to sort of recognize, hey, maybe I need to nurture myself differently than what I was as a child. 
And showing up differently in that way will help strengthen that individuality. And then you'll show up better in your relationships and um, really be able to do some of this integration and emotional healing work. So I hope that that gives you an idea. What I like to do when there's a Libra or a, a new moon and so much potent energy in one sign, I like to break it down with my Zodiac workbook and journal. And this is something you can purchase through a link in my description below. It's it's really a, a tool for those who are learning astrology or want to know how to integrate with their own personal birth chart. This is the tool that helps you break that down and see the correlation for yourself and have your own personal ahas and revelations about how this is impacting you. Because when you can make that correlation between your birth chart and the transits in the sky, that's where the magic of awareness comes to play. And that's where we can grow and change. So as I wrap up this video, I would just want to highlight that the essential oil that came up for this particular new moon is called green mandarin. And it's the oil of pure potential. It is one that helps us step out of our old belief systems, helps us do the reflective work to sort of look back on those emotional wounds that have caused fear or self-doubt or failure, those scars that hold us back, that keep us from being truly who ourselves as an individual um, and really sort of fall into old patterns of seeing ourselves not as that unique individual, but as the relationship or as um, part of the group, but not necessarily safe to be oneself in the group or in the relationship. So this is going to support you through that to help open your heart, to really lean into a, a practice of fearless living. It's interesting because it also came up last month for the Pisces full moon. As I did that video, you can go watch that as well on my channel. But this again is this reminder that our body needs help in integrating so that we can really step forward into our pure potential. You can find this oil um, in my in the description below. I really recommend it. it's a wonderful oil for gently cleansing the body. Um, I like to put a couple drops in my water. Um, it's really great for dry brushing or um, to help stimulate and 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 support the lymphatic system. Uh, when we look at the Libra body and the the, the way that the the uh, energy of the sky impacts the body itself. Libra rules the kidneys or the dual organs of the body. And so you're going to see that show up in the lower back, in the reproductive area, um, any kind of balance with the fluids and salts, um, that fight or flight response with uh, the, with its opposition to Libra's opposition to Aries. And, and so we want to use this to support ourselves through it. So I encourage you to grab a bottle. It is it is most delicious. It is most refreshing. It smells amazing just to smell it straight from the bottle. And it's one of my favorite oils. It really brings this lightness and brightness um, and courage to the whole experience. So as you go through this, again, this solar eclipse, I encourage you, the solar eclipse and new moon, pay attention to this because again, this is a this is the beginning of a, a growth period when it comes to our how we show up in relationships. And we're going to see this play out. So anticipate this playing out in your relationships over the next six months, um, how you use your voice, how you show up as, as a person, an individual in those relationships and pay attention to those emotions. Are they, are they driving you? Are you being driven by your past or are you consciously choosing to be aware of them, hold space for them, feel them, and integrate them so that you can move forward in healthier patterns in your life. I have a wonderful resource that you can get. It's an essential oil cheat sheet for all those 12 zodiac signs that help you break down it on a physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual way. Um, and what can support you in your dominant energy, your dominant astrological energy. And of course, if you want to really dive into understanding your unique energy and how your chart is working for you during these transits, you can always, again, grab that workbook um, and journal for the Libra season. So I hope you found this helpful and I'm excited for this new moon. Again, what a wonderful time to set new intentions and new ways that we desire to grow in these very valuable things that we have to experience in life called relationships. I hope this is helpful and um, have a good new moon.